Hey everyone, this is Jason Holland, the owner and travel butler with Travel Simplicity. I'm very pleased again to uh, be with Jean-Michel uh, all the way from New Zealand. It's the evening here. I'm about done with my day, um, but he is just starting. It is eight in the morning. So good morning. Good morning, Jason. Happy to be with you. Thank you. Happy to be with you too. I see you had your, uh, you have your coffee there with you. Yeah, cup of tea. Ah, oh, cup of tea, nice. What is the what is the tea of choice this morning? Mm. Well, actually, not by design. It, it is a, a local brew, um, and it's a chai type, and it's got um, a local horopito pepper. It's a Maori pepper in there. Um, I, I, so. I didn't even know there was a Maori pepper. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. That's, so, that's so fantastic. It's a combination of a comfort tea and a pick me up. Now, do they grow? I, I I wouldn't imagine that they grow the actual tea leaves in New Zealand, do they? Uh, well, actually, they do grow some. Um, there, there's a very successful um, oolong uh, tea plantation up in the North Island, and uh, they they do some interesting, very the, the, the tastes that tend to come out of this country tend to be very clean and fresh um, because they yeah, they embody what's in the country. So very clean and fresh oolong, but it comes with a, a pretty clean and fresh price tag as well so we don't <laughs> often. <laughs> that's great i and for people that are watching this no we really truly did not plan this we had no idea we were going to talk about tea <laughs> <laughs> so what is the what is the pepper like it's a little bit bitter and um it, it's not really what you would use in cooking because it's it's not um it's a bit if, if it was a duck, it would be a wild duck as opposed to a domestic duck, for example. Um, so it's a, it, it's a bit strong in taste um, and a little bit bitter. But, uh, but it works well in the tea where you think you're doing yourself some good. And do you drink it black or do you put, what do you put in it? Yeah. Anything? Yeah, I'm a purist. I drink it black. Okay. That's yeah. usually what I do too. But, you know, my, my wife is Canadian and they get a lot of influence from Britain. So she's a oh, cream, yeah. and, cream and sugar kind of gal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I did 20 years of that, and I, I just couldn't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> no more. Get rid of it. That's funny. So I wanted, uh, I wanted to talk with you about food and wine mm. Uh, mm. in New Zealand. So um, what do you think? Very, very interesting. I am actually a foodie. Um, I, I, I don't like getting on planes, but I will get on a plane to have a meal. Okay. Um, so uh, food for me is, is something that, that brings me immense joy. Um, and so New Zealand is quite interesting because my, my mother's French. And in France, you're dictated to by your mother and your grandmother and your great-grandmother as to what exactly goes with what and how you do it. So a great cooking tradition, but wow, it's, it's, really, it's really surrounded by all sorts of rules. Um, whereas what New Zealand did um, about 30 years ago, we were like, England in the 1960s. Yeah, the, the, the height of culinary prowess was a fried egg and a, and a <laughs> side of chips. It was terrible. Um, um, but then uh, New Zealand has started traveling more and more and more, especially fell in love with Italy. And over the last 30, 40 years, that there's been a culinary uh, revolution pretty much in New Zealand, mm -hmm. uh, where every taste from everywhere in the world has been welcomed and, and adopted and adapted. Uh, so what we've got here in a, a number of places is some of the finest, freshest ingredients in the world, which is what we're known for, uh, but put together by people with no rules, no rules at all. And um, some of the, the restaurants, um, one of my favorites in Auckland, typically when, when I talk to people from overseas, I try and direct them towards New Zealand um, yeah. thing, because that's why they're here. Um, but with, with the food, it's, it's a bit different. One of my favorites in Auckland is Japanese. And I say to people, you've got to go there. And the, the question is why? And I say, because it's unlike any other Japanese you've ever been to. Okay. Um, so it's the combination of, of where it's from and, and how it's spun in this country um, is really quite, quite exciting. Um, and um, Auckland uh, went through another renaissance about 10 years ago, where if you're not eating out almost every night, you're, you're behind you're behind the curve. You don't know what's going on. 
Mm -hmm. um, there, there's new things popping up all the time, funky things, small things, informal things, formal things. Um, so it's a very, very exciting culinary scene here. And, and there's another aspect to food in New Zealand, and that's gathering. Um, in, in this country, we don't look at stuff, we do stuff. Um, okay. So if, yeah, if you can see it, you can get in it uh, one way or another, on a kayak, on a bike, on a jet boat, or, or whatever. Uh, it's the same with our gathering. Um, New Zealanders, on their holidays, they typically go out and gather. Sometimes it can mean hunting, and we have a pest problem here with deer. Far too many of them, and the government paying money to shoot them, so it's ethical to uh, go out and help them keep the population in check. Um, but the more usual gathering would be things like trout fishing, sea fishing. Um, we do a lot with our seafood. Our black abalone um, is very popular, and there are certain places we know um, where you can go to and gather it yourself and cook it over a barbecue and so on. Oh, that sounds uh, amazing. Yeah, we've taught our clients um, how to dive for abalone. We've taught our clients how to dive for our rock lobster. Um, we've taught clients how to spearfish and go out and get a juvenile kingfish because the big ones are just too too big for a beginner. Um, and and so on. Um, it, and we've got a Maori chef um, up in the Topo region, and he Maori have got the right to harvest freshwater crayfish, which are, none of us have got the right to do. And um, so he takes you out and you go and do it with him. Um, you go and trap eels with him and, uh, and um, also go and collect uh, pickle pickle, which is a, a lovely little inner frond, um, which is what they call Maori asparagus. Um, and uh, watercress, certain places where the water is running really clean and the watercress just jumps out at you. So there's se several different things we focus on when, when, when we help people around the country. Yeah. What is um, Auckland as an exciting scene uh, for, for people who are really into food and want to try lots of different things. And it's possible to be really naughty. A few years ago, I, I, I worked out that uh, I could go to this restaurant and instead of having a starter and a main and a dessert, and the main's always a bit too big and whatever, and you can go in and order every starter on the menu. And, and then you, you get, it, it, it's like the, the Zakuski Russian way of eating or the tapas way of eating or the, you know, the big table you see in, 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 um, in countries in Europe. Um, and um, so we really recommend that as, as a way to, to work out what the chef's doing. And then you can actually get even naughtier. And um, you can not go to one place, but you can go to two or three places. Um, you can go to one place for a bunch of starters, another place for another bunch of starters, and then a third place for dessert, for example. Um, so, so there are ways for people who are excited by food to, to really enjoy it in Auckland. Um, around the country, um, the, the depth um, of excellent food isn't there. Um, so in some places, you would only have a cafe and you're back to chips. Um, um, so, so you have to plan when you're going into the back blocks. Uh, as to what well, you're doing. I, I have had some of the meat pies as oh, I'm driving yeah. down the road. That's pretty good. I, I have to say, you, I, I'm yeah. not sure I would want it every day, but yeah, good. Yeah, I, I uh, guided uh, myself for about 10 years and, and I lived on meat pies. Um, so I know exactly what you mean. But we've actually become more sophisticated with our meat pies now. So rather than the plastic wrapped ones at service stations, uh, there's, for example, a place down the road here um, that does homemade uh, venison meat pies, for example. Um, and that, those, are, those, are, those are gourmet pies. They're pretty special. Well, I love so, yeah. just on a, on a cool, on a chilly day too, it's just, I don't know, there's something nice to have that warmth of a, of a meat pie. It's just hearty and it, it fills your yep. stomach, but it also, it just feels good. Yeah, absolutely right. I really like this cup of tea. It's comfort food and hearty, as you said. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's great. I um, man, So what is, what is the name of the that Japanese restaurant you like so much? Uh, Masu, M-A-S-U. Um, I've taken two of my children there one-on-one, -on -one, and I've taken my wife there as well. And uh, I, I hate going out and having meals on my own. But once on a business trip up to Auckland, I also went there on my own. Um, I like it so much. Well, you uh, know, so, so here's here's something to try. I don't know if you've done this before. Um, I'm I'm a foodie too. I love going out, having a good meal. 
Um, I, I've done it by myself, but yes, I do definitely prefer it with, <laughs> with others. But I, uh, I actually used to be a sales representative in the audio video industry. And so I was always traveling by myself and I was always eating out by myself. And quite frankly, it got lonely and I, I would eat out all the time. And <clears throat> at that point, not only did it get boring, but it was like, what, what do you order? You know, I'm looking at another menu and there's pages upon page upon page of options. And so something I started doing, which I still continue to do to this day, you have to be careful of where you do this. But I started to ask the, the waiter and the chef to surprise me. Have you ever done that? I've never been that brave, uh, but, but I, I have gone for the weirdest things on the menu and regretted it. <laughs> oh, well, that's the thing is when you, it's interesting, when you ask them to surprise you, um, the, you, you should see, I mean, it really changes their, their mentality many times. Like some, of, some people just get thrilled and they're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that this guy just asked me to do this. And they, they really do think outside of the box. In fact, in the best cases, I've actually had the chef prepare something that wasn't on the menu. Mm. And uh, that, mm. that was really special, not only from the experience, but the food was really good. Other times they've picked things off the menu that I probably wouldn't have chosen on my own, mm. but turned out to be excellent. And mm. uh, I've only had very few times where, like you said, that it, it didn't turn out right, but uh, <laughs> something you might want to try next time. I think I'll definitely try that. But like you said, I'll be careful where I ask. <laughs> yeah, don't do it at the local place where they... <laughs> where they don't really know or, or, uh, or if the waiter doesn't care. And if yeah. they seem to be kind of backpedaling a bit, a little bit, maybe ask them to have the chef prepare the meal that you, uh, that he thinks you should have. We, we do actually have one uh, vineyard restaurant down here in the South, um, not far from Queenstown. Okay. And they don't have a menu. Um, it's called trust the chef. Um, so, so you go to this place, and, and it is top grade. This place, and you just don't know what's what's happening. And they they have themes on particular days, and so you turn up, and, and you don't even have to think about the wine because they wine match with their, their wines, and uh, sit there and get done to. And and normally, being a bit of a control freak with my food, I'd hate that because uh, no, no, I want the stuff that I I like, not 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 some rubbish that some chef might like. But um, I've never been disappointed, touch wood, <laughs> so far. Yeah. That's, what I've, that's what I've realized. You know, I used to say, well, I don't like this or I don't like that. But yeah. so much of it is how it's prepared, what the ingredients are, how knowledgeable the chef is. And if it's a good chef, they can, they can make almost anything taste good. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what about, so what about the wines? Let's talk about the wines. Well, yes. Um, another one of my favorite topics. Um, where do I start? New Zealand was put on the stage with Sauvignon Blancs, where people thought, wow, these are better than the French one. And then followed up behind that with all sorts of other varieties. The variety that's, to use an American term, that's kicking ass at the moment is Pinot Noir. And uh, our like, Pinot Noir like Pinot is... Noir. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty special. Um, and there's the wonderful thing about New Zealand is how uh, small and connected the whole place is. Um, just up the road from here is a good friend of mine who comes here and fishes um, on our river. And uh, he's a Pinot Noir winemaker. And he's not only a Pinot Noir winemaker, he's the most awarded Pinot Noir winemaker in the world. He's won the prize for the best Pinot at the London International Wine Fair four times. And that's just ridiculous. It shouldn't be possible. <laughs> his, his wines are absolutely superb. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to put your name on a bottle in the cellar over there. Um, because they, the, the, the elegance of them, the structure of them is, is just out of this world. Just superb. Um, but I'm, I'm more naturally a slight a medium to heavy body uh, wine drinker. And New Zealand, having a cool climate, doesn't have uh, that many medium to heavy bodies, except we're now just starting. Um, and there's some phenomenal Cabernet Merlot blends coming out of Hawke's Bay. And, uh, and there's some superb Syrah blends coming out of Waiheke Island. Now, these, these names won't mean a lot to people. But if you can imagine New Zealand is long and thin, 
uh, like the eastern seaboard of the US, um, pretty much every three hours of driving, you've got a different vineyard region. Um, so it makes for superb wine touring. Um, beautiful scenery, uh, stop off for a nice walk somewhere and then go and drink too much wine um, and have some of that food. It's not, not, a, not a bad way to spend your time here. Um, so, so in terms of wines, our, our Chardonnays are, are uh, excellent. Um, I would drink those above a French Chardonnay, mainly because my favorite French Chardonnays are ridiculously expensive, uh, whereas the Chardonnays here are much, much more affordable. I really, really rate the Napa Valley wines. Um, and I'm afraid we've got nothing that compares with those because we don't have that sort of climate. Um, but our Waiheke Island wines are, pretty, are, are a bit close to there. Um, Sauvignons are, are excellent, but Sauvignons are known as a, an easy wine to make. Um, and so that, that's sort of light, fresh, not too serious thing that you'd have at lunchtime. Um, then, um, um, yeah, the Cabernet Merlots and the Syrahs are probably the main other one. But we've got a lot of varietals starting to spring up, especially down south here with Pinot Gris. And some people are experimenting with Albarinos and so on. Um, but an interesting story, I was talking to, to Grant Taylor, this, this awarded winemaker, and he was telling me about a conversation he had with a, with a French winemaker. And the French winemaker was the son of a uh, Burgundy uh, Pinot Noir house. And um, he'd come over here to see how New Zealanders did things. And they worked together and got on very well together. And this French guy turned around to him and said, uh, Grant, I feel really sorry for you. Grant said, why is that? He said, um, well, back home, we know exactly where to plant uh, which grape and exactly when we're going to harvest them because we've been doing this for generations. Um, and Grant said, yeah, yeah, I get your point. But he said, you know what? He said, what? He said, I feel sorry for you. He said, well, why do you feel sorry for me, Grant? He said, because when we're out there doing stuff, we haven't got a clue what, what's going to happen. So we think... Let's go and have a look at this hill over here and let's plant this grape variety and see what happens. So we're discovering new things every year. Um, and so the, the New Zealand wine industry has been famous for 20 odd years, I would say. Uh, although I'm getting old, it might be 30. Um, and um, every single year in, in those years, we've been discovering, discovering, discovering. We're still discovering. We still don't know exactly what grows best in what region and people are still planting them and they're still finding stuff out. So, so it's fascinating again. So it's just the same as the food where, where we're into discovery and assimilation of influences, but it's exactly the same with wine. Uh, so, so again, exciting, light, easy, not tradition driven, um, uh, fun. Yeah. That's fantastic. I know we actually, one of the things we, we did when we were over there is, uh, we couldn't help it, but we, I had one of the best, but I, I wasn't uh, really into wine uh, when I was there. It was a while ago. And uh, I had one of the best bottles of wine, probably the best bottle of wine I ever had at that point. And uh, I ended up, my wife and I, we, we bought a couple bottles and brought them back. And, uh, and do you remember which one it was? Off the top of my head, no. I'd have to. I'd have to go back and look. I do know that we uh, that we saved it because it was fantastic. Oh, cool. It was in a cool setting too. We were actually in Christchurch at the time. Uh, Sandy's my wife, Sandy. Her uh, one of her good friends lived in Christchurch, and uh, we the restaurant we went to was in an old converted church. So mm -hmm. you're just in the middle of the this church eating some mm. fantastic food with a great mm. bottle of wine. I mean, talk about a, a really lovely experience for the evening. Mm. Nice mm. and romantic for two. Yeah, yeah, and relaxed. One, one, one of the things I really enjoy about this country is how laid back it is. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that's how I roll. When I, when I take the bow tie off, I'm in a t-shirt and, and sandals, yeah. so. <laughs> Well, Jean-Michel, this was, a, again, just a wonderful time. Thank you for sharing about the food and wine in New Zealand. And uh, I appreciate having you here. It's a pleasure. Thank you.